The director's task is to recreate life itself, its movements, its contradictions, its dynamics, and its conflicts. It is his duty to reveal every iota of truth he has seen, even if not everyone finds that truth acceptable. Of course, an artist can lose his way, but even his mistakes are interesting, provided those mistakes are sincere. Today, we're going to look at how we capture these images, the process it takes to find the frame, the process which makes the product that we see. This is a film set. Behind me, people are filming. I am filming them. How crazy can this thing truly get? This is the way proper films are made. Actual films, a team effort. The director doesn't even focus just on their mise-en-scene, but also the thing behind camera, the chaos that you never see, the chaos which develops the clarity of the emotion that you see on screen. But it's this thing. This is the life that the director lives. This is the true truth which really gets to their heads, because this is their main existence. No one ever just exists on camera. I've been, uh, someone very stupidly put me in charge of art direction. But uh, so far, so good. What does it mean to be in charge of the art? Um, visual enlightenment for the masses. Okay. And how are you working with your director? Um, do as I'm told. And so who's directing the art then? Maybe in that sense, we'd say the viewers. Oh, that's fucking good. <laughs> My scarf's going to fly off. Good day. Good day. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, you're, you're about to direct a film. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you prepare to, to find the frame? Breathe. Breathe. Like, this has been a fucking waste of time. Yeah. Look away from <laughs> it. <laughs> There's been a development in our frame. Here, we have a sound man wrangling a boom. He's going to have to track the sound for the actors that walk below us. It's a tough job sound. Me, myself, You're about to direct a film. How does it feel? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> um, I think on the like morality, I definitely think for me there's a thing of like interrupting their, their moment and like a lot of the figures are quite isolated figures and it's kind of interrupting their moment and you know, themselves connected to the world around them mm. and sort of just being taking a little like glance into that world for a split second mm -hmm. without interrupting them and mm. what they're doing because would you say your work's quite like invasive almost hey sir uh, what are you doing today just uh just setting up some lights and that what does it mean to be on a film <laughs> what does it mean yeah. That's a deep question. are you being directed right now yes Technically, um, I think it could feel invasive. Um, I think there's an aspect to it of like, I think with a lot of the photos, you can't really see the actual person, mm. like their face. Mm. Like they might be turned away or the face is covered. So I think that might kind of, that kind of stops the, the invasion of like privacy. But then I think there's maybe like a documentarian aspect to it as well. Yeah, and you're also kind of maybe invading like. Maybe their mental, like, their mental mood. This is an actor's rehearsal. It's when they go through the lines. So the director can judge how well they're doing. Substitution. The infinite cannot be made into matter, but it is possible to create an illusion of the infinite. That is the image. All it is is like a, is an image, a small section of someone's brain or someone's life or someone's position. Like I think like the context and meaning behind a picture isn't always reliant on what's completely in the frame. If anything, sometimes trying to like figure out what's outside of the frame is why it's framed that way in the first place. Hi there. 
Hello. You're about to direct a film. What does it take to prepare to find your images? Letting go of everything, surrendering. What are you surrendering to? Everything, nothing, being naked, flying. Sorry. Please keep your clothes on. And that's a fucking film. Why is surrender necessary? To challenge preconceptions and uh, desires that might get in the way of of the of the of the of what you're aiming at. What are you aiming at? Nothing. Most people live in a a straight a straight line. They don't turn left or right and look at other images. They look at their one image that they've been taught, usually taught by their parents or their community. And I think what film and art does is like, it just turns their head to a slightly new image. My purpose is to make films that will help people to live, even if sometimes it causes unhappiness. That's Tarkovsky. Let's go see if people that work on film sets are truly happy. Yeah, I'm very happy. This film is really about a man um, it, who is struggling with his identity, and which I think is something which I think we all can relate to, to a greater or lesser extent. I feel like I'm already quite aware of like what is going to be left out, what isn't. Mm. No, sometimes it might overlap, but if I see something, I might think, okay, that's going to... I can instant, like, instantly think of like, what's going to be in that, what's not. Our attention is often drawn to the centre and to the sharpest point of the image. So purely through the craft of cinema, we wanted to kind of align the view of this particular person. You can see throughout, he is always sort of centred in the middle of a frame. And we always see, you know, the world from his view, wherever it's wide. And I think because of this, we go on a journey with him. We trust him because we're taught that, you know, the vehicle, the person which takes us on the journey, you know, we trust him. We, we tend to like them more. We as the audience, and sometimes rightly so, assume that everything the director has given us is exactly what the director wanted us to see, but I don't think that is the case. The director needs to meet the natural chaos of the world and its own limits, and it needs to conversate with reality in order to bring its creation into being. Which is why I think the trope of an unreliable narrator is such an interesting one, because it, um, it subverts that, and you can play with the audience expectations based on the way you frame an image. And being aware of the light as well and now that can just create its own frame in itself as well. But yeah, I think a lot of it comes back to like, yeah, graphic design and how you lay out a page is how you lay out a photo, pretty similar. Mm. So where does lighting come in in the hierarchy of importance? I think it's one of the most important things, to be honest. If you don't get the light right, anyone can pick up a camera and shoot something, but if you don't get the light right, it's not gonna look as nice. I think the photo comes from a very like, innocent starting point, um, which I feel like, innocent in the way that it's a still life, which I love making, and I kind of never knew why photographers took pictures of flowers. I thought it was really weird that they all do it. And then I did it for the first time and it was like, yeah, because it's, it's kind of just you and, and the flower, and it's this sort of, it's this thing of, of beauty that you're kind of trying to make look as beautiful as possible, but it's kind of, you know, there's no egos, there's no like, interaction with people, there's no awkward conversation. Even the word direction becomes, becomes, I guess, egotistical because you're placing yourself onto something or placing that, so more often than not, placing something onto yourself for another image, which I think is where a lot of perhaps things go wrong. Yeah, I chose this picture specifically for best meaning because I didn't actually take this picture. Um, it was taken by a machine, a wildlife camera, mm. um, that I put film into and then went into the woods and then tied around a tree. And what's interesting about this image in particular is it's the only one that came back from the entire roll. So of 36 images, this is the only one that came back. And I think it's kind of, yeah, it's going past that point of, of 
it's kind of losing that human interaction, but by losing that, it's unlocking this whole other world of, of potential that if you had the human interaction, you wouldn't have been able to walk through that door. Mm. You know, it's kind of, there's like this whole other realm. How much time should the director take to philosophize about his own project? None. Why? Because you, because the project doesn't get made. What did you pick it, like framing on, is it more about his position within the photo? Yeah, or that, that, like, I think that abstracts like, within it. Yeah, I think it was sort of framing and lighting, working in hand in hand to sort of show the model as this like central force within the image. You know, I mm. kind of like wanted it to have an impact on the viewer in the same way that, you know, Rothko's paintings are all about how it affects the viewer. Um, and although the the compositions are really simple, I think the simplicity of them kind of creates that bigger feeling. What can it mean to them when they have not shared with the author the misery and joy of bringing the image into being? But what they're attracting them to is that is that other angle of life. And I think when when you look at when you look at life from that kind of perspective of okay, there's this there's this huge maze of millions and billions of different worlds, completely different worlds, yeah? When you look at life like that, that's when the, I feel like that's when the connections between the two worlds start to happen. And I think that's what we need. We need more connections between various worlds. You give yourself to the elements rather than direct the elements, and you see their movement, or at least you've tried, you open yourself to their movement, which means, in terms of getting to the film set, you have to move into a space where you are allowing that, those things to come into you, or allowing your body to be, to, uh, like removing all boundaries from your body, so that you can hear and see, but I don't mean, I don't mean just hear and see, but, I mean, that you can let go of these ideas of senses and and be the senses. I think kind of the process of taking photos on the iPhone kind of is almost has come as like a almost use it as like a point of shoot. Mm. You know, we all aware of like you know that sort of technology we have on us now. Mm -hmm. and we've, you know, you've always got your phone, and these cameras are becoming like even better. Yeah, better and better. And I think to do that is actually just, just involves very grounded things like slowing down and not doing, not, not forcing something and not imposing yourself upon something, but letting the elements come to you. So listening and, and, and walking and seeing and hearing and feeling and slowing down, becoming the elements. I kind of see them all as like observations at the moment, but it's the challenge of like, can it become something more meaningful? Or like, say if, like I've done all of these just for myself, say if, for like Stuart's work when he's like actually asked to photograph someone or something, is there a way of like taking that into that world of like making it meaningful for someone else as well? Removing the boundary between yourself and the world and becoming the world. And not directing the world, but, but being, being the world around you. Yeah, I think in terms of the future, like, almost not, not knowing is, is kind of nice. That mm. sense of freedom of like, not, I think goals are obviously important, um, but sometimes they can hinder like, your creativity. I think if you're working towards a goal too much, sometimes you can lose sight of like why you started it yeah. in the beginning. Never try to convey your ideas to the audience. It is a thankless and senseless task. Instead, show them life. They'll find within themselves the means to assess and appreciate it. Let everything that's been planned come true. We're talking about, we're talking about what direction? And if we're talking about direction, Beyond that, we're talking about making. And if we're talking about making, you have to make.